Hi everybody, it's Kathy from Huckleberry Herbs and Art and I'm playing with my new groovy um, plates that come from Clarity and um, I have a video already up on the kit if you would like to go back and see it it was a haul from Tupelo Designs LLC from Mike and Jane's store um, and her channel's Velocity Vet 08 uh, I, I did buy the kit from her which if you go back and check out you get some tools some paper each one of these um, square sets do come as a set and then there's this frame which everything looks backwards because when you're doing parchment paperwork you work backwards you work from the back of the um, art to the front so I'll explain that in a minute but I did go back because Jane and Mike had a big uh, sale this weekend and I ordered another set of the plates so these lovely now these are etched very finely etched so they create grooves so that you can lay your parchment on top of the etching and you can use your embossing tools to create and you don't have to stick with this design you can use parts you know if you needed bubbles you could go in here and just use the bubbles on the butterfly all right, so far I just wanted to test out what this was about, and it's really cool because you can feel the embossing um, on the front side. And so this is the front side, the letters are all going in the correct direction. Um, let me take the plate away for a moment and the frame, and I'll put it on black paper so you can see up close. So here's what I mean by you work from back to front. This is the actual side that I did the work on used the first plate, the simplest plate, I thought, with the mountains and the moons or suns and stuff on them to just get a feel for this. So I'll be showing you the process eventually, but um, you sort of prep the paper um, by using um, a dryer sheet or a little white wax candle is what I was using. Uh, it just helps to make the embossing tools go more smoothly into the grooves. You can do it without it but it seemed to help a bit. Uh, so I did all of the etching, and then, you know, on this side, that's what it turns out to be. And I thought it was really nice. It's, it's kind of neat with the texture, etc. And I did go down and I did the lettering. Now there's something different going on with almost all these letters, so hold on for a second. Um, then I wanted to go back and find out what happens when you play with different materials. This is just plain old, and it's just Crayola pencils. I don't have an expensive set of pencils. And these two layers, the um, dark turquoise and this violet color, those two are my chameleon markers. And these ones down here are plain old zigs. And then I wanted to go back and find out, because the old-fashioned way of doing this would be with no color, what would happen when you um, just embossed. Except the first one I tried, I did it backwards, so the puffy part is on the side where I tried this. And then when I went and tried it again a second time, my hand was getting a little bit better at it, and I was on the proper side, so that when you flip it over, there you go, no ink no paint, nothing, just embossing on the parchment. Um, down here in the lettering, I tried a bunch of things. There's the, there's the embossing. You can see my first letters came out really bubbly. I pushed too hard. I started to get it by the time I got to the C and the D. And then I wanted to go back and try Wink of Stella's and Metallic and I thought they came out pretty cool. I tried the gold and the silver and then I tried doing it on the front and what I found is that you can see that I'm, I'm running over in some spots like for example the top of that E right there I'm, I'm going outside of the lines but when you flip it over this is very forgiving because it looks perfect and I found the same when I was using the inks or the markers that if I went a little bit over as I did here when you turned it over look at that so if you're you know reasonably staying within the lines your the work that's going to show comes out 
wonderful. Um, so when I went to put the ink on the front, because there it is on the back, which looks great, um, but I wanted to see what would happen when I went on to the front and I was within the embossing. Um, you know, when my marker touched the sides of the letter, you got a little bit of the ink in a place where you didn't want it. And this is a, a blue metallic ink on the K. Uh, none of the inks, the Chameleon or the Zig or the Wink of Stella's caused really any problem to the paper. I would say that the, there was more curling right here where the Zigs were, but they also spoke on some video I saw, it might have been Barbara Gray's, uh, that if you just put it in a book for the night and flatten it, um, come back the next day, everything's fine. So, anyway, this is where I'm starting. I'm just playing, I'm just getting a feel for this, and I'm liking it so far. So now I want to start some kind of a project that has a goal in mind now that I've gotten a little bit of a feel. So of course I decided to play with the butterfly and there's a few things that you should keep in mind when you're doing this. First of all, make sure that the word groovy is in the upper right hand corner of the plates because you want to be working on the back side on the side that was etched that has the grooves and you should tape down your work and you should use a piece of paper to protect it from the oils in your hands and you should prep it with a dryer sheet or you can use the little candle and just rub the wax gently to make things smoother. You also should not put too much pressure on the paper because it rips very easily. So I've already done one side of the butterfly and I will show you how it's really easy to check your work because it may seem weird that you're working on the back. All you do is flip it over and look at that and it feels really cool. It's all embossed. I think it looks very pretty. So it's easy to check what you're doing and make sure that you didn't miss any of the lines or cut through too much in case you didn't notice that but just to check your work on the other side you can just keep lifting this and I do have a piece of black paper underneath so that you and I can see a little bit better so what I'm gonna do is now that I've prepped this side made sure that I have the word groovy in the corner in the upper right corner and that my letters are backwards and I'm on the etched side I'm going to do the other side of this butterfly and I will um, speed up the process once I get going but first they give you two tools with two different sized tips or heads on your embossing tools and I'm probably cheating in that I'm using the second to smallest one the second smallest one and then the very pointed end on this butterfly and I have played with it a little so I'm starting to get used to it too much pressure is going to tear this so I'm starting with the second smallest and all I'm doing and it's really very forgiving because as you go around if you slip it doesn't really leave a mark on the paper at least that I, that's what I have found so far because it's not in the groove it's not pressing the paper the hard surface won't let the paper fibers be moved when you just slide across it. And I did that gently, but I'm pressing a little bit harder here. And when I slip out, I haven't really found that it caused any damage to my work. See, I just slipped out a little bit there because I'm still getting used to it. So I'm going to go through this whole butterfly using the first side, and then I will slow down the video again and let you see how it turned out. Okay, let's flip it over and see how I'm doing. So I think you can see the difference be between the first side that's had two passes and this side, which has only had one pass with the second small to smallest tip. 
And I forgot to put my paper here for watch my hand oils. Um, so now I'm going to flip the tool over and go to the sharper side and retrace my steps and um, emboss a little deeper. But again, this is very fragile, so you do not want to press too hard. It really doesn't take that much pressure. You get the feel of it fairly quickly once you get going. But it's a slight amount of pressure. It's not it's not just riding across the top of the page as if you were barely holding the pencil or something, but it's not pushed really hard because you will tear even if you have these. But it does seem to make it smoother because I've tried a little of um, the parchment embossing without. And it's sort of like, you know, when the new sewing machines, and I'll probably mention this when I do a sewing project, when the new sewing machines came out, I thought they were awesome because the old sewing machines, you really had to hold your work. It had like a life of its own and it would get away from you and you would have a hard time getting straight stitches. You had to work at it, you know? But when the new sewing machines came out, boy, the material pulled straight through. You didn't really have to uh, work too hard to keep your stitches nice and straight. It, it almost drove on its own, you know? And that's a little bit what like, this is like. Meanwhile, I've spoken through most of this. Okay, let me turn it over and see if I have missed any places. No, I think that came out rather nice. Let me back out just a little for you so you can see the whole thing. Yes, I think my butterfly came out pretty nice. And so now I need to continue with what the project's going right, to be. So I've decided to write the word celebrate. And I had to flip it over and decide where exactly I wanted the word to fall. And I've decided I want it to fall just underneath the butterfly and run along this way in the card. So making sure that I have taped down my edges. And I'll just back out for a second. So I have a little tape here and a little tape down at the bottom on the plate right here to hold it. And then I have my piece. I've placed it so that I can get that first letter C. So I've placed my C. Now I need to move my paper and get myself an E. And I want to keep it fairly tight, and I want it to go fairly straight. So let's see how well I do with that. Put my tape down again. Just want to check. Yeah, I think my C is going a little low there. That should be good. And again, I'm using the second smallest first, not putting too much pressure on. And then going back with the pointier tip and even more careful not to put too much pressure. All right, so I'm gonna finish this up and get the word celebrate on. All right, luckily I think I spelled it correctly so there is my finished embossing on the parchment paper. It does feel really cool. And now I need to do something with it. And what I would like to do is to place it in a window. So let me see if I can um, come up with a little idea for that. Okay, so here is the finished project. And I have used a piece of lavender cardstock and my botanical wings stamp and again the papers and stamps are in my zip it store under Huckleberry Herbs um, to finish this off I just took a piece of the paper and used an exacto knife and my Tim Holtz ruler to cut a frame I was very tempted to put lace around it and to die cut things but I, I thought I would just force myself to stay very simple so I can have at least one accomplishment at this new um, 
this new little craft that I'm trying here. So I put the colored cardstock underneath the parchment and glued and made sure that my glue marks, I actually think I used my ATC gun, um, would not show underneath the frame and just added these three little flowers, these little satin flowers with some pearls in them and I couldn't help myself, I had to put at least some pearls on the corners to keep it from being so square and straight edged. On the inside I put some of the butterfly medley paper and I have not attached it because what I like to do is wait to see what the card's going to be used for or if I sell it, who's buying it and what they might want to be put in here and then I will attach the paper to a piece of copy paper and write what I want to on the computer, line it upright and print just like a you know, professional cardstock although I would like to be able to print whatever I want to embossed. Um, don't have that method or means at the moment and then I just took my my uh, butterfly from Heartfelt and I used some brilliance I think it's a lavender color put a little pearlescent on there with one of the butterflies that I thought well went well with this and that's it there's my finished first parchment paper embossing project uh, I hope you liked watching this and I hope to get back and do some more for you. I've actually been watching a lot of videos and I think I'm going to order some of the perforation tools because I would like to have the paper on the very front with the perforated edges and stuff. So I'm going to go on with learning about this and hopefully you like learning it with me. Um, thanks for subscribing and thanks for taking the time to watch. I hope you enjoyed it. Till next time everybody, this is Kathy from Huckleberry Herbs and Art. God bless.